Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with Our Blooming Catholic Life, and this is some scenes from my visit with the Confraternity of Penitents, who is headquartered in Fort Wayne, Indiana. This is not one of the penitents. This is, I believe, little brother Lupe, who once he was there, wanted to linger some more, and just like me, they let him. Here are some of the sites from their beautiful Mary Glen, where they welcome people to come in, reflect, possibly have some events there. It, it's a lovely prayer space. Of course, it's all complicated up by local regulations because it can't be a private or public park. It's complicated, and we all know that. That's where we get into this. Um, although none of the penitents wanted to be on camera, what we discussed was a lot about our rules, their rule and the regular secular Franciscan rule of 1978. And in some regards, they felt called to living a rule that was more prescriptive, that gave them more guidelines for the mundane things of life so that the things that mattered, they were free to explore. So, for example, their clothing is more regulated. Instead of wearing the towel cross as a habit like I do, they actually have certain colors they can wear, maybe certain lengths, a certain amount of money they could spend on it just an example. So those concerns are taken away from them and their mental capacity can be focused more on God and things of the spiritual life. And you can see um, one of the funny things is they could not do a full fence in the town because it's too tall. So they instead made little prayer segments. But while that was a regulation that seemed to constrict them, what they learned was they could use things like bushes as pieces of the fence to keep it in the legal boundaries, but also it allowed them then, accidentally of course, to incorporate nature more into the environment as they learned how to work with it. And that is one of the things even you learn in your secular Franciscan formation that I went through, that the rules are there to give you a framework and give you boundaries, but that you have to learn how to work them. And that's really what I learned in this visit was okay, some people are called to a more prescriptive rule, a more ancient form of the rule, and some people are called to the more modern rules. There are some that are called to the rule in between, the Leonine rule as well. There are those third order secular, or third order Franciscans as well. It seems confusing, but the rule, while it completely matters, it doesn't matter at all. What matters is that you were following Christ in the footsteps of St. Francis. Here are some beloved little memorials to beloved pets. And these little rocks surround the statue of St. Francis in that prayer garden. And people can go and remember something in creation that really opened their eyes to the love of Christ. And there are beautiful little moments around all like that. This is in the little chapel that they can meet in. And they've restored all the stained glass. This actually used to be a friary and it has since uh, the friars have moved on, but the archdiocese, sorry, I believe diocese in this case, are allowing the confraternity of penitents to use this space. And they aren't just using it, they are literally restoring the church. I believe they've made those little choir stalls. They have someone who is beautifully painting, touching up all the statues as well as all the stained glass in the windows. They are literally restoring the church and one of the beautiful Franciscan moments is, of course, they are allowed to do this because the bishop invited them. They are totally working with the bishop. And that's something that we have to remember about St. Francis is his level of obedience to the bishop. It's both um, an act of obedience to the bishop, but then it encourages the bishop to be more faithful. It's like when you talk about your marriage vows, right? The wife is obedient to the husband as the husband is obedient to Christ. And you can see here in this lovely stained glass, the obedience of St. Francis reached such a level similar to Christ that he was able to receive the stigmata. And then we have his beloved friend, Father Friar Leo in the bottom. Again, a lovely stained glass of Claire losing her hair. And it reminds us again of that rules that kind of limit what we wear. And so many of us talk about we don't like that part of the rule. And then I see so many secular Franciscans limiting their clothing choices down to a capsule wardrobe 
as well as many of them buy things all with secular Franciscan logos. We long for that simplicity of the habit. We long to restore truth and beauty to the world. And we're all doing it in our own way with our own rules. But it's so funny that we have so many things in common. We may rebel against a certain aspect of the rule and say we didn't need it, and then we find it. We need that conformity with Christ, right, friends? Right there is the conformity of St. Francis with the arm of Christ. We need that conformity with Christ in our littleness. And although we may technically be following different rules, we have far more in common than we do that are different. <laughs> I love this little guy. He was in the discernment house, the women's discernment house. They were pet sitting for the weekend. And I thought that he was a lovely little marker of a refugee there in in the house of discernment. The house of discernment is for young ladies who are discerning either becoming a consecrated virgin or being living a life, um, entering a particular convent or monastery, whatever the women are discerning as well as some older women may go there and stay for a while um, who have nowhere else to go. And you have your options. You can, um, again, they have a very simple rule in the house. There are certain things you're required to pray in common, I think once a week and a communal meal once a week, and you can buy your own food and things. But if you need help with your rent or food, you can actually go and work in the Confraternity of Penitence bookstore in so many hours will offset certain costs in the discernment house. Again, another example of a lovely little chapel that they are working to restore. This is the image of Christ in the stairwell. And it is just breathtakingly beautiful. How many of us even look in a stairwell? It's an unseen moment. You walk by and that's where you find Christ. Like the story we have of St. Mother Teresa, you know, Calcutta, is she, she used to step over the poor on her way to work. And that is when she got her call within a call that day that no, that thing that you didn't see, that's the thing. That's the way that you can serve me. And this is a beautiful room in the second floor that they're still working on restoring. And it is just such a calm, peaceful, I think it's a three seasons room, but a beautiful space. This is the simple living quarters. They let us take a little peek inside and you can see how homey and welcoming and warming. And that's what they're trying to provide is a home for Christians. Um, but the confraternity as a whole is, is building a new family, a home of, of third order Franciscans. A lovely little lounge area where they have all kinds of movies and books to aid in their spiritual formation and time together. And doesn't it feel like a home friends? This would be a lovely place to live. And I was really challenged by this concept of the house of discernment. And they're actually working on restoring one for men as well. What a beautiful ministry. And out there are their gardens. They have flowers. They have different vegetables that they're growing to help you know, feed it themselves. And perhaps there's a little soup kitchen. It's just in front and to the, the right, I believe there. And so maybe if they have an excess, they can take it over to the soup kitchen and food pantry there. There are so many beautiful moments here, friends. This did used to be a Franciscan friary, the ladies house of discernment. So there are many beautiful Franciscan touches around to remind you that God does call us to live in nature, but not for nature, that it's it is there to raise our eyes up to God, right? And here we're going to have a little representation of that. Here is that same grate, and it is lifting us up. You can see the cornerstone of the building. But what is that cornerstone of the building? Let's see if the image keeps going up. Sorry, friends. I can see the entire image as I'm talking, and you should have seen that coming. It's, in fact, a crucifix. Oh, it got cut off before you could see it. And here's the church that it itself is being completely restored. It had a bad recovation. I don't know when the recovation had happened, but they are fully restoring it. So we're going to get to see, <coughs> excuse me, some moments here. This is a group of poor clares of the Capuchin expression who are living in the old rectory. So as you go into the church, you can leave them prayer requests and they may come out. And again, being a Franciscan church, I love that they had this gorgeous crutchy there. So even as you enter the church, you remember the humility, the littleness of Jesus. At the same time, the awesome sacrifice he made, right friends? 
the equality with God was not something that could be taken from him. It's not something that God could force him to do. It was something that had to be given up freely. That self-giving kenosis. And you can see the beauty of this church as they're restoring it. The, the section that's walled off behind is the chapel for the poor Claire's, as well as there's some screens there for Byzantine Catholics that are using this space as well. Now, during this renovation, this church was only open this one day. This was the Feast of the Poor Chionkula, and what a beautiful gift to me to be able to go and pray in this church. Here are some of the old confessionals and altar pieces that will be used in the restoration of the church. I just found it so encouraging and beautiful to see them. We are penitents. We were originally the brothers and sisters of penitents. And to see these beautiful confessionals being restored, that it is something lovely to go in and confess your sins to the Lord, to be reunited with the Lord. I love that picture as you leave. It just, that's how you should feel when you leave as an innocent little child. And here is, in fact, the headquarters. If you order books from the Confraternity of Penitents, there's a building right behind this sweet little house. And that's where the bookstore is housed. But how welcoming to have your meetings, everything. We are a Franciscan family, friends. That's us. We're a Franciscan family. All of us. All of us Third Order Franciscans. All of the Franciscan family. We are one family. God bless you, friends. Gracio ante crucifixum. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Sume gloriose Deus. Illumina tenebras cordis mehi et da mihi fidem rectum, spam certum et caritatem perfectum, sensum et cognitionem domine, ut facium tuum sanctum et verax mandatum. Amen. In omni patris et filii et spiritus sancti. Amen.